Welcome back to this channel. Today in this video, I would like to talk about viscosity. Viscosity is a property of a liquid and viscosity is generally defined as resistance to motion. So any fluid, whether liquid or gas, will cause some resistance to motion. And this kind of motion happens when we flow the liquid. So for example, we are pumping this liquid here. So in this case, we are trying to make this liquid flow. And in this kind of situation, the liquid will impose some resistance to flow and this property of the liquid is known as viscosity. Definition of viscosity is done in this way. So viscosity is defined as the resistance of the liquid in shear. So for example, if we have liquid here and we are shearing. That means we are applying the force tangentially. In this case, the resistance that this liquid will impose on these two plates will be defined as the viscosity property. And soon we will, uh, I will define how we can calculate the viscosity. And here in this case, we assume that the liquid here is in contact with the this plate and there is a stick boundary condition stick wall boundary condition which means that liquid is completely sticking to the, the boundary or the wall there is no slippage between the liquid and the solid surface we can experience this kind of motion in many applications for example i will give you an example of boat race in a boat race, the racer has to work very hard to overcome the resistance of water. And this resistance is basically the viscosity of water. So here you can see that in order to be top in this race, it is very important that racers apply tremendous amount of force all together so that they can overcome the resistance that the water surface is providing. And this resistance is coming from the viscosity of water. And you can see that the design of the boat is basically helping them to move faster. The boat has very thin base. So this, the reduced surface area will reduce the resistance that the water will apply on the boat. So this is very important for the, the boat design. So we can understand from the boat race that that the resistance the water will impose on this boat is proportional to the area, the area that the boat, area of the base. So the resistance force will be proportional to the area. And also the resistance force will be proportional to the speed, how fast the boat is moving. So the faster you want to make this boat move, the more the more force you have to apply in this direction. And that's why the boat racer have the boat racers have to work very hard to apply tremendous amount of force so that the boat can move very very fast. So this will also be proportional to the velocity. Now one more parameter is important in the case of viscosity that is the how di deep the liquid is or how deep the water is. So for example, if the boat is very close to the bottom surface of the river, in that case we have got very small gap here. So let's say H. So the force applied will be 
inversely proportional to h. That means the smaller the, the gap, the more the force uh, is needed. So when h is very large, then this force can be smaller. So f or the force is inversely proportional to h. So in this case, we can write force is proportional to a the area that they are in contact with velocity how fast the boat has to to go and the distance from the base which is given as h so this is the proportionality and if we convert this into an equation with equal marks then here we will have to write a constant eta so the constant eta is known as the viscosity and that is the property of a liquid in this equation if we compare with the shearing experiment so this is h and this is V and let's assume that this plate is stationary so V is velocity is zero so if we bring area on this side so we can say F over A is equal to eta V over H and F divided by A is written as shear stress tau. So when you've got a surface area like this and this is the surface area A and you are applying force of F, the tangential force of F, then F over A is known as the shear stress or tau is equal to viscosity eta and V over H. So V over H is also known as shear rate and if you look at the units so it will be per second so here the shear rate is written like this gamma dot so this is the proper equation of viscosity so viscosity is basically shear stress divided by now this equation is very much valid for liquids which follow this kind of trend and these kinds of, of liquids are known as Newtonian. So Newtonian liquids will follow this trend. If we plot a graph of shear stress as a function of shear rate then it should give us a straight line and the slope of this straight line will be eta. So this is the proper definition of viscosity and the Newtonian fluid or Newtonian liquids. Other kinds of liquids which will not follow exactly this behavior, they are known as non-Newtonian fluids or non-Newtonian liquids. So the viscosity defined by this formula is known as absolute viscosity or this is also known as dynamic viscosity. But there is another type of viscosity which is known as kinematic viscosity and we can write as this one. The relation between kinematic viscosity and absolute viscosity is given by this formula. So the kinematic viscosity is given as absolute viscosity divided by the density, density of the liquid. The units for absolute viscosity is centipoise, so this is known as centipoise and the units of kinematic viscosity is given as centistoke. So centistoke, kinematic viscosity and absolute viscosity in centipoise and in this situation the density is given as gram per centimeter cube. So if we use these units then we can find out the kinematic viscosity in centistokes. Also we should know that one 
centistroke is equal to 1 millimeter square per second. So, in order to illustrate the viscosity, I have got this experimental setup here. So, this is a container with water and this is polystyrene block. So, polystyrene can float on water. So, if I push this polystyrene, it will move. But in order for it to continue to move, I must continue to apply the force. If I stop the force, then this polystyrene block will not move further. Right now, it is moving because of the flow of the water. But if you imagine the flow, there is no flow in the water, then as soon as I stop it, stop applying force, this polystyrene block will stop at that point. So that means in order for me to keep this polystyrene block moving, I must keep applying the force. And if I want to make it move very fast, then I must apply large amount of force. So this is exactly works as I have just defined what is viscosity. So this is because of the viscosity of water. If this liquid has higher viscosity, then the amount of force I have to apply will also increase. So I have to apply higher force for this block to make it move. Now I will conduct another experiment to show you the effect of film thickness or the liquid thickness that we defined as H. So here I have got the same polystyrene block and I have got some little bit of water here. So it is wet. So I make a film thickness, thin film of water between this polystyrene and this acrylic. So here you can see that water is present between the polystyrene block and the acrylic. And as I tilt it, the poly, polystyrene block does not go down because the force required to shear the, the film of water in between is very, very high. And weight of the polystyrene is not that much. So therefore, it will not move down no matter how much I tilt. So this is because of the high shear stress required to shear the water film. Now, if I increase the film thickness, then the force required will be less and the weight of this polystyrene may be enough to shear the liquid or shear the water. So here I will increase the water film thickness by just dropping few drops of water here. So as you can see, because of the water film, the film thickness was increased because of because I poured water here and therefore the polystyrene started moving just because of its own weight. But now if the thickness is not much, then it will stick to polystyrene, um, to acrylic, it will not move. So this is, this is the effect of the film thickness or the liquid thickness. Another interesting experiment about viscosity I would like to show you is this one. Viscosity is related to the flow of liquid. So in a very earliest time, the viscosity was measured in relative terms. So between two fluids, how they will flow. So I've got this syringe and it has got capacity up to 60 milliliter. So initially viscosity was defined as the time taken for 60 milliliter of a liquid to pass through an orifice and how much time it, it took that gave us the relative viscosity of the fluids. So here I will just show this experiment. So I will fill this the syringe up to 60 milliliter. Okay, so it is filled up to 60 milliliter. And now I will record the time taken for water to come out of this syringe through this orifice.
So it took 34.6 seconds. Now I will conduct the same experiment with olive oil. So this is the olive oil and olive oil is more viscous than water. So let's see how much time it takes. So this is 60 milliliter of olive oil and I will empty here and I will record the time. So we can see that just under gravity it is taking very long time for olive oil to flow through and since it is very viscous compared to water it is now flowing at a very very slow rate. So here we can see the comparison between water and olive oil how viscosity plays role in the flow of the liquid. So now olive oil has completely flowed out of this syringe and it took about 6 minutes 20 seconds. Now I will conduct the same experiment using another liquid. This is engine oil. So engine oil is quite viscous compared to olive oil. So in this case also, I will take 60 milliliter of engine oil and I will let it pass through this orifice all under gravity. So there is no force being applied from the except that there is gravity force. Now you can see that this liquid is flowing at a much slower pace than olive oil. So this experiment shows how we can compare the viscosity of different liquids using a simple device like a cylinder with an orifice.
all we have to do is to have a standard dimension and use a standard dimension for comparing different types of liquids. You can also compare their viscosities at different temperatures. So total time taken for engine oil in this case was 13 minutes 42 seconds. So the experiment I showed just now is similar to what is known as Seybold universal viscosity. It is defined as the time in second required for 60 cubic centimeter fluid volume to flow through the Seybold viscometer orifice at 38 degree Celsius. So Seybold viscometer has standard dimensions. In my case, I have used a normal syringe. So if you make the fluid flow through Seybold viscometer at 38 degrees Celsius, then the time required will be used as a comparison and which is known as SUV or Seybold universal viscosity. Now this Seybold universal viscosity is related to kinematic viscosity and therefore a relation has been proposed which is given like this. So this relation can be used to find out the kinematic viscosity of the liquid. So kinematic viscosity is equal to 0.22 T where T is the time in second minus 180 over T. So using this equation, we can convert the Seybold universal viscosity into kinematic viscosity. And we already know that kinematic viscosity when multiplied by the density gives us the absolute viscosity. So some grading system has been proposed for liquids or oils such as engine oil and gear oils. And here kinematic viscosity in centistokes is plotted here. So from 10 to 2000 on this scale. And here we have got the, the grades of the oils. So for example, for engine oil, SAE engine oil, 10W should have kinematic viscosity in the range of 35. And these are at 40 degrees Celsius. Similarly, the grade 20 will have kinematic viscosity in the range of 40 to 60 and so on. So these are the grades of oils, different kinds of oils and same and the grades in ISO or ASTM are proposed in this fashion. So these are the numbers ISO 10, ISO 15, 22 and so on and these are the corresponding viscosity. Several graphs are also available to find out the viscosity. So here we have got absolute viscosity in centipoise as a function of temperature for different SAE grade. As we know, viscosity is very much dependent on the temperature. So therefore, any change in the temperature will make the viscosity change considerably. So here, for example, if we want to know at 40 degrees Celsius, SAE 10, the viscosity is in the range of 40 here. And as we increase the temperature, the absolute viscosity is going to go down. Higher the grade, higher will be the viscosity at a given temperature. So this is how we define viscosity and how we grade different types of lubricating oil through viscosity. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question or comment, please do write them down below in the comment section. Thank you.